Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Take it away. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, people, do you know what the demo scene is here? Is yeah. Uh, so, so basically, demo scene is where you make a useless application, like a small short videos on a hardware. Uh, they play in real time, and people compete who makes a better one. So usually that is nothing to do with the, with the FPGAs or ASICs, or it's usually on like eight-bit machines, sixteen-bit machines, and PCs, GPUs. So people compete in that for years now. It is very Nordic thing. So this year, the Tiny Tape Out um, made a competition, doing the same, like making this audiovisual programs or in this case, a hardware, uh, and make a competition out of that. And uh, the, the constraint for that was a, it needs to be very small. So it needs to be ASIC, actual ASIC, not a FGA, not it needs to be ASIC, and it needs to be a very, very small one, like 160 by 220 microns. Uh, on 139 visuals. Do you know what the tiny tape out is? Okay, yeah. So, so that's the challenge, basically. And uh, I think it was an interesting challenge because it's the first time, pretty much, when we competed on uh, making a demos for ASICs, for actually making the hardware, not programming something, but making a hardware that will make a sound and video. And uh, at first, basically, it's like it's a very tiny area. So when you start, with, at first, you think, okay, well, it's impossible to fit anything into it. And uh, after some time, you start kind of playing with it, and then you figure out, okay, you can actually fit quite quite something. So that was the first experiment that I kind of uh, I did. And uh, just to basically, this area is around maybe you can fit around three thousand, four thousand logic gates. That's it. It's maybe a little bit painful, but <laughs> that's the actual demo running in the. It's running on FPGA here just to record it because the hardware is coming in next year. And it loops, so it's basically eight effects. Uh, yeah, it's a tiny, tiny, it's smaller than a speck of dust, the, the, the silicon itself. Yeah. Output is a VGA. So basically, the, in the, the, again, the, the competition is, there is only one input, there's only clock, uh, there is nothing else, there's no memory, no CPUs, nothing. And the output has to be VGA and, uh, and audio, and that's it. And uh, you've seen the kind of the, the demo now. Can you can maybe guess how many logic gates there are in in this? What's your bet? Three thousand. It's a very good bet. <laughs> so it's uh, a little bit more. It's uh, it's three and a half thousand uh, logic gates. It is only 137 bits of memory there. Flip flops. Uh, actually, flip flops are quite big comparing with the normal logic gates. So you need to conserve them as, 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 as make them as small, make, don't use them too much. And the overall lines of code is actually pretty low. It's 250 lines of code. So this how uh, the chip itself, the part of the chip that make, runs this demo, or this demo is, this is the kind of the, 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 the layout. It's hard to read it uh, unless you've done that before, but you can see there's a lot of, a lot of small kind of gates here and is it the same one, it's a metal layer, there's a power, power lines going like that, uh, horizontally, vertically, I'm sorry. And if you can, if we zoom a little bit into that, we can see the, where the outputs are, like there is a two inputs into the, into the chip itself, there's a clock and reset, and there are just two outputs going out, there are connected lines on the top of it and they're connected to the P mods on the on a external hardware. And you can actually kind of can see how, how those, uh, how the, which parts are connected, that the video is, um, video is eight, eight pins connected and the audio is pretty much one pin. They're just all shorted together. 
So it's as well with the tiny tape out, it's really cool. You can look at your chip in the 3D, you can examine it a little bit. So it kind of doesn't give you much, <laughs> but it's cool to, to look into it. And you can see that on the top there are the power gates, power lines, and on the bottom there are like a bottom layer, they're actually logic gates. So what was the most surprising learning for me is that turns out I used to do the demos before I did the small ones and larger ones on this different hardware. But uh, I would say that actually doing it on a, on a, in hardware now with the ASIC is actually feels easier than doing it in coding on the 8-bit machine or 16-bit machine or even on the PC. So why is that? I think because when we work, when we code a demo, especially the small ones like intros, very limited, like a 4K demos, it's, you have to work with something that someone else gave you, like the CPU, GPU. They usually are, I mean, it's, it's always a headache trying to figure out the ways around someone else's hardware. And it's not necessarily built for the purpose that you want. And now when, you do, when I do the hard, like when I designed this hardware, it made it just for this purpose. So the constraint is of course the number of logic gates I can have because of their area. But it's, it's just designed for that. So it's, based, it's quite relatively easy because you just think about the problem and you don't need to figure out, okay, how do I work around someone else's hardware? So I found it relatively refreshing and interesting to, to do the hardware instead of writing software for someone else's hardware. So what made it this demo possible, it's a very quick iteration times, so that's very important for the small demos like that. Uh, open source tools. Uh, and uh, the tiny tip out community was great uh, help to create that. So what in terms of the quick iteration times, there's this VGA playground where you can write a very low code directly in the, in the browser now. And it simulates the VGA output, so it's like, it's really fast and quick to try different effects. Uh, I tried it like I would normally at home, I would run it on the FPGA, uh, on the icebreaker. And it's pretty good, pretty good hardware to, 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 to kind of prototype something that you can get from the tiny tape out. It's approximately the same size uh, of what you get with your design. And it has all the P mods, very great. Tiny tape out itself, it's very, like it's easy to, to, to use, just pretty much a one button click on a, on, a, on a GitHub, you push your code, it compiles, creates a GDS for you, tests, everything like that. But it provides enough tweaks that you can actually uh, op start optimizing your hardware and, and, and crank as much as possible uh, into the space. It's just a couple of parameters you have to tweak. Open Lane 2 is, uh, mm, before we were using Open Lane 1, and with Open Lane 2, I can cram much more logic gates than before. So, so this is how the VGA playground looks like. Basically on the left side, I don't know if you have used Shader Toy, you heard about the Shader Toy, but it's something like similar. On the left side, there's a code, where you write the Velour log, and immediately you can see the, uh, the output like running in real time. Really cool. Tiny tip out tools. So for the inspiration for this demo, for the, the, the one inspiration, the main inspiration was the demo, 256 bytes demo for the PC, but uh, as well the, uh, because the limitation here, right, on the, on the hardware is you don't have a frame buffer, you don't have that much logic gates, you have no memory, no CPU, so it reminds kind of the 70s, the hardware from the 70s, uh, like maybe arcade machines or like really old hardware. So that's why I went for the print design from the 70s as a, some form of inspiration like lines and those colorful things, circles. And here is this 256 demo uh, on the PC, on the PC like a really tiny demo. But as well, they have a bunch of effects. Yeah, so the emphasis was to create a, uh, like a graphics that are looking interesting with the limited curl for it and use basically some effects that you've never seen on a 8-bit or 16-bit machines. So there's a lot of like curved lines, uh, yeah, like the, the strange, uh, strange fractals, uh, something you wouldn't see in the demos on the old hardware like that. 
the hardware that is kind of compatible in terms of size and complexity. So basically, you remove everything from, from that. You put only the hardware that is necessary to create these effects, and then it looks kind of interesting. So here is the, the, the tiny tape out board, usually, like the, what you get, uh, and it's a, like a small chip actually sitting there, and there's a bunch of PMODs. So for this demo, for this competition, uh, there were the requirements were to use, to use this kind of PMODs, the VGA PMOD. It's a very small PMOD, it has only uh, six bits, six lines for the color, uh, two lines for the vertical and horizontal sync on the VGA, and for the audio, there's like a, this small PMOD that uses just one bit, actually. So the VGA signal, the output of this demo is the VGA signal. Uh, you can plug it directly into the VGA monitor. It's an old standard. It's a pretty low resolution compared to by today's standards, 60 frames per second, uh, and uh, it's a 25 megahertz clock. And it's really well maps, maps really well to basically to icebreaker, FPGA, like a small FPGAs and the tiny tape out hardware. The, the, the main limitation we get there here is that you really need to be fast for the for the pixels. You pixel you have only 40 nanoseconds, and the number of colors is very very limited. Here you can see the output, basically how this, the waves look like, and here we can see the horizontal sync. It's like it repeats every for every line of the VGA uh, for the display to be able to sync, and some red, green, blue bits here. And you can, it's, it's, it, it's the output from this first image, and you can see a lot of black, black and white stripes, and those are these heaps here. So this is, like here, this is one hor horizontal line of the, of, the, of the screen. You can count that it's approximately the same amount of blips as the white line. As I said, the interesting part here is there's no frame buffer. Uh, so it's like a really hardware from the 70s type of thing. You have to raise the beam, like people used to do the Atari VCS, Atari 2006, like it's the game consoles from the, from the 70s, 80s, early 80s, late 70s. So they would raise the beam, they would generate the pixels only, like while the beam is going for the, over the CRT display, that's the time you have to generate your pixels. You cannot store them, you have to calculate and show them immediately. So that's, we have a 40 nanoseconds per pixel. We have to generate it and show it immediately. Uh, so it's to have, to, to, to have this kind of multiple effects in a small uh, amount of area, in a small amount of logic gates. Uh, we use this texture combiner approach where basically you can, uh, you, you have some blocks uh, that, pr that generate something interesting and then in, on top of that, you just recombine these two or three blocks in a different, different ways. Like, so here, every part tries to combine those blocks in, into interesting color and, and show it on screen. So it's, it's a very simple kind of approach, but it allows to use three blocks, literally a three blocks, one block that generates a fractal and two blocks that generate these circular patterns and then this code recombines them into kind of, to, to get a visually different looks output from it. And the audio, the audio is kind of interesting here in the way that it's a one bit uh, pulse width modulation. Uh, this was a requirement for this competition that you can only have one bit, not eight bit, not 12 bits. There is no DAX, anything like that. You can only have one bit but you have pretty high uh, clock rate. So it's like the same VGA clock rate. So we can use just one bit. Uh, but if you modulate it fast enough, you can get like something that sounds like a maybe six, eight bit of the output. And here on the screen, you can see there's a vi video like overlay uh, where the, how the sound actually looks like. So for the every, this is, the, the pixels there, like overlay of these white bars, this is exactly what is being sent to the audio output. So you can see them, but they generate the sound at the same time. This is not like an abstract visualization. This is actual p 
pig the actual, like when it's white, there's a one being sent to the audio. When it's transparent, it's, it's zero being sent to the, to the screen. So it's cool, like you can see the four channels and you can debug them by looking at them. <laughs> it's, it's quite amazing, actually. And uh, yes, four square waves. Uh, you could maybe see that there is some amplitude uh, modulation there. There's an envelope <coughs> on the very left side, that side, sorry, right, left side. Uh, there's a the kick drum, it goes like all, every, every beat. Uh, and uh, there is a, like a snare, is this very noisy line in, in, in the middle. And there are like a bass and lead sounds just generating the square wave noise, which are uh, enveloped with, with uh, if I if I put it on a like a small tiny icebreaker FPGA uh, as well, I, I, my my go-to hardware for experimentation. It's so fast to iterate. I don't use even very late or anything like that. Just put it on the FPGA. It takes 32. This demo is 32 percent of that FPGA. Uh, doesn't use any any fancy things. So takeaway today is actually quite easy to create ASICs like. I my background is no hard. I don't know how to create hardware. I started doing it a couple of years ago just for fun. Uh, but yeah, mm, it uh, seems quite easy with tiny tape out and with the ifables. Uh, I was surprised that my so far my experience is that it's actually easy. It took me less time to create this demo than usually would be like a 4K or 1K demo. Uh, yeah, optimization for iteration times is important, especially with hardware, I guess. And yeah, the, this is kind of the, usually the demo scene is not open source. Usually everyone does it closed source, but this competition forces us to do it on open source, right? The tools are open source. Uh, we have to put the GDS, we have to put the source code. So it's very interesting. It's, 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 uh, this competition is kind of making the, open, the demo scene more open source. So when we release, like when this demo got released, the, the source is already there, so everyone can take a look at that. So it's, I think it's cool. Yeah. Just an animation. This is how the tiny tape out looks inside. There is a bunch of designs right there connected. And this, the green one is usually your design that is being activated and it's connected to the output pins of the, of the that's it. Thank you. Wow, that's very impressive for how few gates you had in that design. <laughs> um, I have the first question, which yep. is those video algorithms that you that were like manipulating the VGA buffer or whatever, the, the, the flops. Um, uh, if, if you go back up, like how did you know, where did you get those from? Like how do you know what the algorithms w should be? Oh, down one, down one, next, next slide. Next slide. Yeah, like these things, the texture, can, like to have these effects done. How? Yeah, it's uh, combining like basically those, um, there is uh, there's one thing that fills in those uh, like a, uh, the, 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 let's call them like there's a bunch of couple of registers. There's a dot register. There's an out register. Mm -hmm. Sorry for names. It's a demo, right? You code it really quite quickly. Title. So it's it's a it's a bunch of kind of registers that's being filled by some other hardware. The one uh -huh. which is creates rings and gotcha. another which is creating like the, the drop yeah. title and there's basically how do I come up with this logic here? Mostly by Trial and error. Trial and error. Yeah. It's like you know, you try something and it looks nice, right? Mm. So, so it's as well with these small demos. If you come up with something that you want to create from the start, it's actually hard to do it mm. because most often it's it's hard to predict what you're going yeah. to get, right? It's better to do something kind of. Wow! Well, in this case, we started uh, me and my friend. We started with like a fractal. Yeah. We tried to get a fractal. We didn't, couldn't fit it in. But then we saw, okay, if I took this pig, part of the pixels from the fractal, it kind of looks nice. So it's like, mm. and then you iterate on that. Yeah, super impressive. Um, it's truly like a confluence of engineering and art, right? It's very cool. In a way, yeah. yeah. yeah you're right. Philip. So hold on 
is the iteration time. So you, you code something new, how long does it take until you actually see if it looks good or bad? So with this VGA, uh, VGA Playground, it's immediate, right? It's a JavaScript. Uh, it's a ja <laughs> exactly, it's, like a, it's in a JavaScript, very long running in JavaScript, compiling to something like a logic, uh, probably mm, like it, it compiles to some form of yeah. And uh, is it? Did you say it's Verilator underneath a VGA playground? Yeah, oh, so it's cool. a Verilator running in JavaScript. Verilator right? all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So it's it's like a um, couple of seconds before you see the result, right? But then usually you still want to run it on FPGA at least. So f f it's like a minute, maybe less than a minute, thirty seconds. Just a couple of observations. The first is the fact that an old original wedge size Apple IIe did the same kind of thing for the audio. Yeah. But the other thing also is the fact that now that you've done this, you do realize the fact that people can now ask you how to fix their CRT because that's the technology that we use to actually fix stuff. <laughs> well, the code is there, so they can fix that. <laughs> He's not playing on a CRT, right? You've got a VGA HDMI converter. Well, actually... That is probably a million times bigger than your chip. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is true. But uh, no, I actually I have a, like a CRT at home. Uh, so, <laughs> so you s said you had no uh, background in hardware sp in Verilog uh, before. When you started out, how did you first start? What resources did you s use to uh, take to make this demo? So this it, it's uh, it's not true that I have. I mean, uh, before doing this demo, I already had a pretty good hardware experience as in I did a bunch of tiny tape outs in the last two years but the first uh, it was even before tiny it was MPW like this Google uh, yeah. Google runs that that shuttles yeah that's when I started doing that so basically what I I, I, I tried to get very long to, like for me it was I couldn't crack it at all like it was what is this so it was one book um, uh, it was this uh, making Verilog g games in Verilog or something like that. Tom Tom Higgs. I I can give the, I I can find his that book. But uh, mm, we were talking about it on Twitter just a, just a day ago. So it was there's this eight bit uh, workshop. Uh, this is like a JavaScript as well. Something like this trader toy thing where you can write Verilog. So that. That's, I think, I believe the URI is using the code from, from that. But just a second, I can show, I can show what I mean. So this thing basically, yeah. And there are these books. Designing video game hardware in Verilog. It kind of looks a bit stupid, but uh, but it's a great book for someone like for me with the graphics background. It was great; like I could understand immediately what he means about that. It's a great book. I really recommend. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Stephen Hogg. So I think you should organize an ASIC demo party next year at Orkon. So, uh, uh, but what I'm about engineering and hacking. So you this trial and error. People would call that hacking and not engineering. So as a new guy in this space, how much do you feel this is engineering and how much this is hacking? Because typically an RTL guy is a guy who follows procedures for doing the engineering job. Eh? So what do you see there as a, your opinion on that? Yeah, there's not much engineering to be honest, I think. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the, you, you just need to understand VGA signal, right? And that's, but uh, I, I, I remember I had some discussions with the, with the guys on Twitter and people were, usually people don't do that. Like, I go direct, now I go to Verilog directly. Like some people, like usually when I talk to people, they say we do that in C first, we kind of write the program and then we convert, like we validate that it works and then we convert it to, to, to Verilog. And for me, it's like, I don't, I, this is strange. I just go directly to Verilog. Uh, so it's mostly hacking, I guess. I call it art, Staff. That is art, <laughs> come on. <laughs> All right, uh, there was another question, I thought, somewhere. Oh. So how did you do the sound design? So the VGA gives you the visuals. Is it just your experience with demos that you 
you know what sound will look, sound good? Or? So, I mean, I'm not happy with the sound, to be honest. It's a, it was a bit of a... Uh, uh, but, um, so, I, I actually taped out a couple of... Uh, I taped up a couple of uh, replicas of the 8-bit uh, chips on a tiny tape out before, with the like AY and the SN7648, it's like an 8-bit uh, really crappy synthesizers. So, so they were, I, I was, uh, I knew how the synthesizer kind of, this simple synthesizer works. And, uh, and yeah, so it's, it's very inspired by those 8-bit synth since what they can do, like a three-channel, four-channel thing. Right. So Matt, for, for this demo scene competition, were you allowed to put like a processor down and like an audio synthesizer and a big ROM? Had to be pure gates. Sorry, one, one, one sec, one sec, I'll give you a mic. We just had to fit in the tiles in the space, okay. but um, it couldn't use any external hardware and you just reset it and it goes, because right. the judges have to be able to run all the demos without any extra hardware. Oh, wow, okay, very cool. Um, was that, did you say it was 138 bits of state? Yes. So it's <laughs> that's that's very little because you know you've yeah. you've got to have at least a, like a counter for the, the for the vertical row and horizontal row yeah. and then you've got some sort of shift register for your PWM modulation thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you, you using so for PWM, no. It's like it's it's a bit different. Uh, it's uh, okay. So you just got the amplitude signal. So basically, I don't sum them up. Because they actually, like, as I showed, they are on screen, pixels on screen, so I just generate those. I don't sum them. Those channels are not summed up. They sum up on the externally on the... Oh, okay, you're just the mixing them together and then you're relying on the external integrators. Yeah, sum them. exactly. Yeah, the, the capacitor, uh, capacitor integrates them out externally. You can see the, the, the iteration time, by the way. So this is the iteration time for the uh, changing the colors here because I'm there. And by the way, the demo now is part of this VGA, uh, VGA uh, playground, so you can go and tweak it as well. This is exactly what VGA playground was invented for, right? <laughs> exactly this. <laughs> yes. I love it. So now it should hopefully like a oh loop. My God, so good. How, how many yeah, submissions soon. were there to the demo scene? 32 submissions. That's cool. All right. When do we get to see them all? We're going to um, tease them over the, over the seven months to wait till we get a hold We will be teased. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then maybe a latch up at OROCON for next year. Hey, we're going to have them all going. I can't wait. Um, cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cool. Impressive talk. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.